Hello everyone, today I want to show you how to make this beauty and humor bracelet with what can either be butterflies or dragonflies depending what you want them to be along one side here, so that's the embellishment and the design of this braid so and obviously I finished it off with my Kumahimo ends and then my clasp and extender chain and it looks like that so the inside here, the, what's going to be against your wrist is nice and smooth so it's going to be comfortable to wear you just have your either butterflies or dragonflies on the outside being the embellishment there. Now the size of this piece, the braid itself is about six and a half inches depending on your tension so that can alternate a little bit but that's also why I like using a clasp and extender chain but what you could also do if you wanted to make it longer you could add more blue beads on the ends in the pattern setup or you can even take some away if you want to make it shorter so it's completely up to you just make sure you take the same amount away on both ends and obviously you can finish it off however you want to so if you want to learn how to make this braid with your little butterflies or dragonflies on, then keep watching. So these are then the materials that we're going to need. First of all here I have a round come here just because we are making a round braid. And then here I have my cord. Now this is a point formula Eslon and I'm just using this blue colour because it matches with the main beads that I'm using for the braid. And as for the beads here, first of all I have two colours of eight Omiyuki seed beads. One is a white one that's going to only use get used a little bit for the butterflies but then here I have a cobalt blue one so this is a silver lined seed bead and this is going to be the main colour for the background hence why I'm then using that colour of the card to match that but you can obviously combine your colours however you want to and then finally here I have my pip beads so these are going to create the butterflies and this specific colour is crystal AB again you can choose whichever ones you want to and then finally here we need some findings to finish off the piece so I have my Kumahima ends and then my clasp as well, so lost of core clasp, extender chain and my jump rings to put it all together. So let's get all the materials together here and then let's get started. Then we need to cut some lengths of our cord here so we can start making the braid. What I have is four lengths of about one meter each of my s -line. And then what I've done is I put all the ends together and then I fold it over in half and put all the ends together again. So like that, to find roughly where the middle is. And then I tie a regular overhand knot, just where the midpoint is. And then I've also just tied a piece of scrap wire around it, just to help pull it down through the disc. So you can use that, or you can use Kumahima weight, it's completely up to you. So I then took my cords there, and then I've taken that piece of wire where the knot is, and put it down through the centre of the disc, so through that hole, and then I just distributed the cords around the disc like that. So I didn't use any of my numbers here on the disc, so I don't really use them. All I'm looking at is mainly just the dots there, and I'm just using them for reference. So I put one cord on each side of all the dots around, just on those four places. So each one length of cord has now turned into two working lengths that we're going to use for the braid. And the first thing I want to start doing here is just make a little section of the braid before I start adding in any beads. So I'm just going to start with my top left cord here on the disc, release that, bring it down across the disc, stay on the left side of the bottom one, bottom pair there and then take the bottom right one, bring it over the top and stay on the right side of the top there and that's one pair and then turn your disc for the next pair that we need to use and then again take my top left cord, bring it down and then take the bottom right cord and bring that up so just like that and then turn your disc again so basically just want to keep doing this always working with the opposite pairs there to each other. So just do this so we have about one to two centimeters of braid before we start then adding in the beads as well. So now I have my little section of braid there and it's coming out of the back. You can start to see the braid forming. Then what we need to do now is start adding the beads onto a length of cord, so like that, and then continue to then add them into the braid as we keep braiding it as well. So this is then all the beads added to all the lengths of cord here. And I've taken a picture of this setup and I put that on my website along with some description of text as well to make it easier to set up the beads properly. And I'm going to put a link to that in the description box below so you can go then have a look a bit more closely if you need to. So setting up the beads this way here accommodates for the way that I work with my braid. So like I showed you before, I start with my top left one, bring that down. Then I take the bottom right one and bring that up. So if you start with either the top left one or the bottom right one, they're the same as each other. You want to set up the beads the same ways that I've done here. But if you start with your top right one or the bottom left one, because they're the same as each other as well, you need to set up the beads differently. And what you need to do is basically set them up in the mirror image. So imagine you have a mirror in front of your disc. You need to set them up in that image there, the mirror image. So what that means is the 
beads on the top cords would swap over and the beads on the bottom ones would swap over here, so just with each other. And on the side, the top ones would swap over the middle and the bottom ones would swap over the middle as well. And that then achieves that mirror image, which would accommodate if you work in the opposite way than me. But then once we have the beads on here, we then need to start incorporating them into continuing making the braid. So I then continue here by taking my top left cord again, just like the other times. But then this time, as I'm releasing the cord, I'm also going to drop down my very first bead. So release that alongside of it, and let it drop all the way down into the middle. And then make sure it tucks underneath the cord there in the middle as well. Bring that down. And now the bottom right one here. As I'm releasing the cord, I'm also letting the first bead drop down, just like that. And then just making sure it gets tucked in underneath the cord in the middle. That's crossing over. And then turn my disc to the next pair, and then just continue. So release one bead here, as I'm dropping it down, making sure it tucks underneath. So the really the most important thing is to make sure your beads stay underneath those cords in the middle, because that's what's going to make sure they end up on the outside of the braid. And just keep an eye on that throughout. So keep doing this with all of your beads. So I now reach a bit further here, and I've got to the point where I'm going to add in my first pit bead. So I just want to show you that. I'm just going to take my top left one again here, that's just a regular one, seed bead, let that drop down into the middle, make sure to tuck it under, and then the bottom right one, I release my cord and let my bead drop down, and that is then my first pit bead, and all you do is just let it drop down the exact same way, and you just have your hole kind of on one side of the bead, and then the other end of it is coming outward and it will pretty much naturally sit the way it needs to. So just tuck it under and bring your cord over to the top and then you'll be able to see that the bead just sits sticking out there from the braid and it's going to pretty much naturally do that but you can always just keep an eye on it throughout and you just want to keep doing that. So there's really nothing different when you add in the pit beads other than just keeping an eye on them. So just keep using all your beads here till we get to the other end. Then I used up all the beads here on the cord, so I don't have any more left to use. So now what we need to do is just make another little section of braid here, on this end, just like we did in the beginning, with just the cord. So all you want to do to do that is just take the next cord that you do to use and just continue braiding. Just obviously then without adding in any beads. And then what will happen is the cord here on the end will naturally singe in in the middle. And then end up just like the other end. So you want to do this again for just about one to two centimeters. So we have the ends there that we can then use to finish off the piece with. So when I then have that little section of braid, what I just want to do is secure the end here so we can take it off the board without the braid coming undone again. And what I'm going to do is take the next pair that I was due to use, so not the one that I just used, and I'm going to take cords that are diagonally opposite each other on the disc, so these two, bring them across the middle, tie a knot and then tighten that all the way down here right on the end of the braid and then I'm going to take the other cords from that same pair and again over the middle tie a knot with them both together and then tighten that down and then just go to the next pair here and we just want to use all the cords in this way Because it just secures the ends nicely while we're then going to finish it off, but also without adding too much bulk to the braid right on the end here. Because we're going to be using the Kumihimo ends, and obviously, we need to make sure the ends can get inside of them. And the last ones, just tie a knot and tighten it down on the end. And then with the last one here, I just like to do a double knot, so just one more. That holds a little bit better than just the single one. So there we go. Now I'm going to take my disc away. And then we have our finished braid. And it then looks like this here. So we have one side that's the back, it's nice and flat so it's going to be comfortable to wear. Just the rounded side of the braid. And then on the other side here so we have all the butterflies or dragonflies, whatever you want them to be. And you can see the little wings there. So that's what it looks like. Obviously just using these materials here you can use whatever beads and colours that you want to really. So it's completely up to you how you want to combine it. Now what we need to do, all that's left, is finishing off the ends. So I'm just going to put a bit of glue around the ends of the cord here, and then cut off the excess. So 
So we just have a nice neat end. On this end, I'm just going to take off my wire. And then I'm going to finish it using Kamehameha ends. So I already have a video uh, show how to do that. So I'm going to put a link to that description box below there. You can go there and have a look on that tutorial if you need to. But just finish off the ends, add your findings, and then you have your finished bracelet. So I then completely finished the ends here using the Kamehameha ends and also have attached my clasps. So I have my lobster claw clasp and extended chain. That's what I like to use. And then you have your finished bracelet. So you can obviously use your clasp here. And then you can wear it. And it looks like that. So you have your butterflies or your dragonflies, whatever you want them to be, sitting out with there on the outside of the bracelet. So it's going to be nice and comfortable to wear as well with the kind of flat side of the rounded braid on the inside. And you just have these little butterflies flying around. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial here and thank you very much for watching.